Welcome to the Creative Prayer Book. I'm Eric Scott, and this is lesson number four. I can't believe it's already the fourth week of the Creative Prayer Book. So thank you so much for joining me again. So just to kind of catch you up, if you haven't been paying attention or if you haven't been joining in, uh, each week I'm sharing a new lesson in this little tiny sketchbook with the idea that it's going to be all about uh, creative affirmation. So this idea of prayer, you can use it in a very loose way. Uh, I'm using it as more of an affirmation. Now, before we get too far into things, I do need to apologize. So if you're hearing a little tapping, a little tinkling kind of sound, uh, I am in my studio and uh, unfortunately it's not insulated very well. So you can hear the rain hitting the uh, roof. So if you're hearing that, uh, uh, I do apologize for that. So anyway, let's go ahead and dive into today's lesson. Today's lesson is uh, kind of twofold. The first, I want to talk about a little bit more deeply the affirmations that I'm using. So uh, last week uh, in the episode, I uh, in the lesson, I talked about using these affirmations that I wrote down a long time ago on these uh, index cards. And I have more glued in my uh, big journal, but I'm not going to use these today, but I want to start thinking about them. I want to start thinking about uh, possibly where they, they're going to be and how I'm going to use it. So uh, when, I had, when I'm looking at this space, I, I, I wasn't really sure how I was going to use the affirmations if I was going to do one on each page. But what I've decided is that this is sort of speaking to me as one piece of art, one uh, piece. So I think I'm going to use one affirmation per two page spread. So that way, as I go through and you open it up, it's one affirmation. So if I'm looking at lean into the resistance, maybe that would go here. And I could think about like, maybe there's an image here or an image here, and then the words can go over there. So I'm really trying to think about how the words might appear or where images might go, because that could become something that I do later. Uh, so anyway, I just kind of want to mention that so that you can start thinking about it. Also, I only have like 20 some or 30 some, so I know I don't have enough to fill the book yet. So I might sit down over the next week or two and come up with more or start to choose the ones that I want to use. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm going to put those aside, but I want to get into what I'm going to do in the journal. So uh, I'm going to recap and then talk about the materials and the techniques that, I, that I'm using today. Uh, so looking at this two page spread, I start off with using watercolor paint. Um, so in the background, there's some purple watercolor paint, and then there's some red splatter. And then on top of that, I use some collage, which was from the second lesson. And then last week I did some watercolor pencil. Um, also on the second, uh, during the second lesson, I used some regular pencil. So on here you can see I have some regular pencil and I drew in these as well. Um, so that's what, what has happened is I've created these nice backgrounds. Uh, I'm still not done. I'm still adding more to it, more layers. Uh, so it's kind of like each, each week is a different layer uh, in the book. So today I want to use my pens. Uh, these are my favorite pens. I've been using them for years. These are Uniball Vision Pens. And I always make sure I get the ones that say waterproof. I don't know if you can see that. It says waterproof and fade proof. And that's really important because it means it's it's not going to bleed. Well, it'll bleed a little bit, but not much. Now on this pink one, um, it's still a Uniball Vision Pen, but it doesn't have that. And I know for a fact that this pen will bleed and it'll bleed a lot, which might be really interesting. But you know, if I don't want words or lines or shapes to disappear, I want to make sure that I'm using the, the waterproof fade proof. So uh, these three pens are the vision pens. This one's a little bit, this is a micro. It's a little bit smaller than these. So that's why it's a different color. But um, these are all waterproof and fade proof. And I'm, I'm using three different colors. I'm using a blue, a black, and a red. And... <clears throat> When I use these, I'm using these in very specific ways and thinking about how I'm putting things into the book. So if I kind of flip back, I'm going to show you, I've already done some of this and I can you can see how I've done the red lines and the little black marks. And that's all done with the ink pens. 
But what I'm doing, I'm doing it in three different ways, thinking about using this ink in three very distinct ways. The first is connecting pages. So of course, as a two page spread, this page is connected to this page and the lines and the colors and the shapes do that. But then I'm also thinking about how this page connects to this page. And if, I, if you look, you know, these two marks right there continue over here and work their way across and then here and also over here, continue here and here. And so that's one way that I can use the ink to make things connect. I also use it by uh, repeating um, shapes and things. So here I have some of these circles and then I repeat those circles in here. And actually if I flip it again, those same circles are repeated here. Um, but this is also getting into the second way that I want to use the pen, and that's to create texture and pattern for the background. So uh, I have all these little circles that create that add to the texture, and then um, on here you can see how. <clears throat> excuse me, you can see how again I've used some of those little circles, and they reflect. They repeat the circles of the punchinella that I used in the watercolor and the watercolor pencil. So to create some kind of texture or pattern that kind of fades in the background, that's another way that I'm using it. And then finally, I'm using it to create shapes, to create some structure. So here I have one that uh, I've done some rectangles out of red and a nice bold line out of black, and that starts to create structure and balance. Uh, so the, the big rectangle is balanced by the three little rectangles. This dark line kind of becomes a fulcrum Kind of a, you think about a seesaw and uh, what's happening is that maybe in this area I put a picture and then I can put the words over here and that's going to come in later uh, lessons um, so I'm really thinking about using those shapes and to create structure so even these lines start to create structure on this page so you have this big rectangle balanced out by th these rectilinear lines but then again these rectilinear lines connect to something on the other side and so here you can see how I've used some circles and some uh, rectangles to help kind of create that structure so that's what I want to show you it's going to be a quick lesson today um, but using the the pen uh, the ink to create that. So let's take a look at this page. So this is pretty open. I do have some structure with the squares. So maybe I want to do more of that. And I love using stuff to trace. So I have some stencils. And of course, I have my punchinella. And I have my plastic canvas, both that and this. And then I have another piece of plastic with little circles in it. So those are all going to help me. I like to trace. I know sometimes people are like, oh, well, tracing's cheating. It's like, who says? I mean, and especially this is just some simple, uh, some simple shapes. So using, I'm going to use my red pen, I can start to create structure. So that's the first way, kind of using shapes to uh, create some more structure on the pages. I talked about that a little bit last week with the watercolor pencil. Okay. And so again, I like using the stencils because it's a quick, easy way. Let's get those out of the way. It's a quick and easy way to uh, get some things down. Now, if I wanted, I could just leave those nice and thin, but I want them to stand out a little bit more. So I am going to go back and uh, make it thicker. So what I do is I draw a second line and then kind of fill it in. So I'm trying to make a thicker, more uh, emphasized line. Okay. Now I do want to be careful because that ink is still wet. If I rub it, it could smear. Actually, I smeared a little bit of the ink over here. Hmm, excuse me. This also helps to push the collage down into the page. So by going over top of this little square here, that helps to push it down into the page. So by repeating these squares, 
it creates some structure, but it also creates a lot of balance and unity. So I have the squares here, but then I also have the squares there. It starts to create more of that structure. Now, I think on the same page, I wanna do the second technique to create uh, some of the, um, the, the patterns, the textures in the background. So I think I'm gonna to switch to my black pen and I could use the punchinella, but I use some of that in the background. I'm gonna use this, the, the circles are a little bit different and I'm gonna lay this down and just like I did whenever I was doing the watercolor, I'm not gonna do every single circle. So I'm gonna kind of bounce around with my pen and just trace. And just like over here, by drawing on top of the collage, that helps to push it into the page. All right, so I got a few of those. If I wanted to, I can continue them. If I want them to sort of be even, I can always line them up with a couple of the circles that are already there and then do the same thing. Again, I don't have to do every single one. I could. I, I think that's a bit tedious. Okay. And then maybe just one more time. Again, I can line up the circles with the ones that are already there, a few that go across. Okay, so now that just, just creates a little bit of uh, texture and pattern for that. So the third way is to think about how the pages connect. And I can do a couple things. If you notice, I do have this square that goes off the edge. And so if I wanted to, let me just double check. Oh yeah, I think that would be perfect. So I can take my pen and if I flip the page, I can mark. So I'm kind of trying to hold up the page, trying to peek underneath and put a little mark. So I have these two marks here. If I wanted to, since I used the uh, stencil, I could use that again. And then I can do the same thing with making the lines thicker. Okay, let's see what I got there. Um, so now I'm, I'm looking, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> maybe I do want, just trying to think here. Um, maybe I do want some kind of line that will wander across. Just trying to think how I want to do that. Um, so maybe I want to start here at this edge. And I like to use these kind of rectilinear lines that they echo the edges of the paper, they echo uh, and repeat the uh, lines in the corners of my rectangles um, and so I'm going to repeat that throughout but for right now I want to go back and thicken this line now when I drew that it was a little bit off a little bit slanted another reason I like to thicken the lines I can straighten them up a little bit I can uh, get them a little bit more parallel and perpendicular to the sides of the paper so again, I wanna be careful. I can see that the ink is really wet, so it'd be easy to spread it uh, accidentally or smear it. So just like I did over here, I can flip the page. And again, I can mark either there and do some more of that and keep connecting it. Um, so I, I'm just gonna keep doing that. I, I, you don't need to watch me do that. It's like watching the, the paint dry, but just kind of like I've done up here, you know, trying to connect some of these so that they flow from page to page. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the lesson today. It was just kind of short and sweet. Just wanted to talk a little bit about these cards and, and how you maybe uh, start thinking about or start gathering the prayers or the affirmations that you want to use. Start thinking about how maybe things will go on the page. Um, also thinking about using ink just to kind of create lines, shapes, patterns, textures, uh, but in a way that can help connect pages, 
uh, or to create some kind of structure on there. So um, anyway, thank you for joining me for the fourth lesson. Um, join me next week for lesson five. I'm not sure how many more of these that I have left. I'm just going to keep doing them until I feel like, like I'm done with them. But um, thank you. And um, yeah, thanks and happy creating.